Welcome back to Hope at Home. We are on day one of this week's devotional. Now, I wanted to just clarify for some who may be unaware, this devotional is actually something that's posted weekly to myhopeinfo.org, and you can go there and download the week's devotional. It has some thoughts, some scriptures, some thoughts for every day uh, of the week. And so, just so you know, this these talks here, these devotional times together on video, are actually just... Uh, something to accentuate or to emphasize some points uh, within those devotionals. And so whether we're releasing a video on a given day or not, you can still participate with the Hope at Home devotionals. And I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you even now, if you haven't yet, to download that, print it off at home, or maybe have it up on your screen while you're watching the video. Uh, And I'm sure it would be a help to you. Pastor Matt's done a great job with these. He's drawing our attention this week to the topic of trouble. And... um, my friends, you got trouble with a capital T, as some of you may know, which rhymes with P and stands for pool, and some of you will get that, some of you will not. But the truth of the matter is, trouble is not something that is unusual. In this world today, our lives have become so convenient that we think any inconvenience is some type of tragedy or crime. Uh, we think that trouble is abnormal, that trouble, trouble is somehow errant, but it's not. The Bible says the days of men are few and full of trouble. That word full would seem to indicate it's not, an ab- it's not something that's rare or unusual, but rather that it's the norm. And so what we're going to focus on today is trouble with money. Trouble with money. There's so many areas of our lives where we are touched by trouble, and one of them is the area of finances. Now, there are some misnomers about money. There are some misnomers about finances, about income, about wealth and these things. But I'm going to tell you something, there is no mistaking that there are financial troubles in our lives from time to time. What does the Bible have to say about finances? Really, it has to say a great deal. We'll take uh, as our launching point this afternoon, There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. It's interesting to hear the Bible, that's Proverbs 13, 7. It's interesting to hear God and the wisdom of God state that there can be someone who is poor, yet they're rich. There can be someone who's rich, and yet that person is poor. Now, the Bible also says something in Proverbs about riches making themselves wings and flying away uh, as an eagle toward heaven. I think all of us can relate to that. But it's unusual to think that you could be rich and poor at the same time. Why is that? Because money can buy you everything except the most important things in life. Money can buy you everything but happiness is the way that Pastor Matt put it in the devotional this week. And I just want to, I guess, take a moment and just think somberly for a second. Do we recognize that is true in our lives? Are we consumed with the pursuit of money, thinking that it will get us the things that will really give us happiness and joy and fulfillment? It's incredible that we'd have to say it again, because we've probably learned this lesson over and over and over. Those things can't buy happiness. Money cannot buy happiness. Money can't buy contentment. You know, it's interesting, uh, depending on where you are in your life, uh, there are certain things that draw you. I know as a young married person, I thought to myself, well, I remember what it was like growing up. You see, my family, I'm number six of nine children. And I thought the reason that we couldn't go do all the big fancy vacations and drive the really shiny cars and live in the fanciest of neighborhoods, I thought the reason we couldn't do that was because we didn't have money. And the reason we didn't have money is because we had all these kids. And so I thought, well, before I have children, I'm going to save up some money and I'm going to get the nice car and I'm going to have the big house and I'm going to do these things. The incredible thing is, once we started having children, my wife and I, we realized that money couldn't buy the joy that the child brought. As a matter of fact, if you had asked us, would you be willing to pay a certain amount of money to keep that child or to have that child? You could not name a sum high enough that I would not pay and yet money can't buy a child. Our second child, Avery, was born at 24 weeks. She was one pound, six ounces when she was born. Now, all told, by the time she left the hospital, when everything was all done, it turns out that the total cost for her care was over a million dollars. Now, thank the Lord, I didn't have to pay that out of pocket, but that was the total cost. You know what the incredible thing is? If you were to offer me a million dollars for Avery today, I wouldn't even consider it. Why? Because the most valuable things in life you can't put a price tag on them. And know this as well, there are some misnomers about about wealth and about riches. Did you know that you're not godly if you're rich and you're not godly if you're poor? 
Did you know that the purpose of money is to take care of life's necessities? The Bible says, having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Did you know that the Bible, that in the Bible it says that having money is about supporting the work of God? That having money is about spreading the gospel? That having money is about helping others in need? Honestly, the topic of money is so broad and so big, we could never cover it all in one session or one sermon or one series of sermons. It's a lifelong thing that God continues to teach us. Let us not be bothered in our spirit by financial troubles. Let's learn the lessons that God has to teach us from His Word. And let's trust Him in our finances. Don't be alarmed when trouble comes because trouble is the norm, my friends. But let's look to God for solutions to our problems to teach us the lessons that we need to learn about finances and the other areas that we'll dive into this week. We look forward to seeing you again soon. We look forward to seeing you in our online services and maybe even before too long, we'll be able to gather, gather together again. Until then, we'll see you next time.